terrific crowd. And those four seats you saw empty, they're just back getting something to drink right now because this place is packed. More than 60,000 fans as the 32nd board goes up. Ezra Lusk, Mike Gossler, his mechanic. Last second instructions right now, David. Yeah, if you just get that confidence reinstated from your mechanic, they know you can do it. You know you can do it. But when you get on that starting line and it all counts, you start to doubt yourself a little bit sometimes. Along with Kevin Windham, Ezra Lusk, Mike LaRocco is Damon Huffman, Jimmy Button, Michael Brown, Phil Lawrence should be here, but is out with a collarbone fracture in practice this morning. We're ready to go. And the first qualifying heat is underway. Ezra Lusk gets a good break on the inside. He'll take the short route around while Huffman goes to the outside. But it's Ezra Lusk on the team Honda that's out in front. Number 100 is Michael Brown in second place with Jimmy Button in good position along with Damon Huffman. Also, Kevin Windham now in a battle with Huffman. You can see it from a beautiful shot overhead. You can see the Lusk had a, a clear shot, the whole shot, but he shut off real early. He almost got uh, both those Hondas collected in the back of him, but paid off by tucking it around the inside. As we go around this track for the first time, David Bailey, very hard packed. Lots of air time. Uh, what's going to happen here tonight is the, the main line, the main groove, is going to get very narrow. And you've already heard the riders talk about how it's hard to pass. Everyone's doing everything the same, but they're going to be coming into a section here, the whoop doos they make a left right here. This has been the separator so far today. Here's the battle for second place. Jimmy Button, number 11, trying to make the move on number 100, Michael Brown. It's Lusk, Brown, Button, Huffman, and Windham. Your order here for the first qualifying heat. Remember, only the top four get the transfer to the main event. Michael Brown whipping it a little bit off that triple jump. You see these guys really working that bike in the air, trying to have a little bit of fun out there. If they start throwing the bike around, controlling it, telling it what to do, it helps them relax. Feels like when they're out there during the week practice. Does it surprise you, David, the number five, Mike Morocco, who got a pretty good start, is getting left behind on this track? Well, no, it doesn't surprise me too much. I know Mike is capable of going fast in the hard pack, but he seems to prefer the softer, softer more rutted surfaces. He likes the ruts because he says it divides the guys. The better riders can ride in the ruts. Now, Morocco's one of those types of riders that they had a whoop section all the way around the track. And it was rutted, and the more difficult it would get, the better he would do. Last week in New Orleans, a very rutted track, claiming a lot of riders going down. And uh, Mike was just charging to the front the whole way. A little bit better start, but they have a different outcome there. A good shot of Ezra Lusk, number three, despite a good series in Florida. Indy seemed to be his undoing earlier when he crashed, injured his hand. He's been racing all this time with a boxer's break, a stress fracture in that hand. It's been frustrating, and dealing with the grip injury is always a tough thing to do for these riders, Dave. Well, it seems like somewhere through the year, you can just about expect to have something you know, nagging him. And uh, for him, it's been the hand. I was talking to Stan, and he just made it. He indicated to me he really was a good one. Gesture, but it doesn't seem to be bothering him now. He has no excuse. Right there checking out Wyndham. He's coming off four heat race wins in a row. If he's going to put make it five in a row, he's got to get in a hurry. Ezra Lusk out in front, and Brown is in second place. Can he hold on to his best qualifying heat finish of the year with Jimmy Button on the Yamaha Chaparral right behind him and Kevin Wyndham before Damon Huffman and Michael Rocco. Those riders have completely separated the field. And look at this, Jimmy Button now makes the move on Michael Brown right before the finish line jump. Button trying to regroup after having an excellent middle season run. Three podiums. And then things started going sour. Well, the bottom fell out. He went to Tampa and he's had all kinds of trouble there. And they go to last chance qualifiers. They thought it didn't feel much better than he crashed during the week. But in practice a little earlier, he still looked a little bit rusty, but he seems to be getting it together here now. So Button tried to come back from an 18th to 23rd place finish at Daytona and then injured. He did not race in New Orleans. Button's actually starting to catch Lusk a little bit. The fast pace right now. Wyndham crashed right there yesterday. Had to jump that little double out of the corner and he didn't get all the way over it. And dumped it. Made his girlfriend nervous. Only three laps to go. Can Kevin Wyndham keep his win streak alive and keep qualifying races? We'll find out when we return. You race. You've got tools. You race. You've got a lot of tools. You race. You've got to have a place to put those tools. 
Now when you buy a new 1998 Honda CR125R or CR250R, you'll get a 12-drawer Craftsman Professional Tool Chest worth $600. You race. Honda and Craftsman help you win. This simple-looking device is the key to unlock your body's hidden potential. Introducing the Bowflex Power Pro. Bowflex uses patented power rod resistance to give you an incredibly smooth, natural feel for over 60 different health club quality exercises. It's time to get the body you want with no money down and payments as low as $33 a month. Call right now for your free video and brochure. Discover the body you've always wanted with the Bowflex Power Pro. 1997, what a year for the sport of Supercross. The Netty 7 Supercross Series, bar to bar. And the season is underway. From L.A. to Vegas. McGrath, McGrath is down. down, and then he's under the bike. All on one video. Doug Henry wins his second Supercross. In the best year in history. You can expect a lot of fire. Go behind the scenes and on the track. Albertine through the timing section. The most wicked crashes. We pulled up by him. Bone crushing excitement. You want to know who got the whole shot? You call 1 900 Pro Race. The best riders in the world. Get bar to bar today. Call for your copy at 1 888 659 Race. Or send the checker money order for $14.95 plus $3.95 shipping and handling to bar to bar. Care of Pace Motorsports, 477 East Butterfield, Suite 400, Lombard. Illinois 60148. AMA Supercross is brought to you by Honda Motorcycles, the leader in on and off road fun. Honda, come ride with us. And by Suzuki Motorcycles and ATVs. Now during Suzuki Fest 98, get $500 worth of accessories for free. And choose from great deals like zero down or low APR financing on selected models. Welcome back as Kevin Windham makes the move and pass on to Michael Brown. Here comes Huffman right behind Brown. So the Honda Troy Rider in trouble right now. He's in terms of going directly to the main, he is. And his spot's getting threatened now. Up is one of those come behind riders, but I like the Rocco. Longer the race takes, farther to the front he's going to go. So it's Lusk, but Wyndham and Brown in that order. Now, as soon as Wyndham got around the ground, you can see him just right there jumping up that of like a camel step up, step off. If you don't get up on top of that good, get the drive, land in the hole on the other side. Wyndham taking a load from the inside. That's where he got Brown. Beautiful move. He called the lap rider just to make it a little bit better. Plus with a five-second lead on Jimmy Button, number 11, in second place. Plus would like to get back on track and winning a heat race. His last win in the heats. Back of the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. Had one in the race before that in Indianapolis as well. Ezra Lusk, number three on our screen, and here's Wyndham and Button going at it. White flag lap is out now. The final lap of our qualifying round. Wyndham, oh, moves into second place. Well, he's done a beautiful job of getting through the pack. You know, I, I guess that's easy my words. I, I think everyone does. Everyone's saying how tough this track is going to be to pass on, and Wyndham just slides through everybody. A little more time, he may get up there and give Lusk a run. Wyndham coming up on the lappers now. But right behind him in third place. In our final lap of action, it looks like Lusk will have it tucked away. Over that triple. Not really a triple, the riders just sort of turned it into one. Out over the double, see him use the body angles to put that bike on the ground. The checkers for Ezra is fifth. Qualifying heat victory of the year. Wyndham goes vertical. And Button in third. So a tremendous heat win for Ezra Lusk, who is, uh, you kind of get the idea, David, he's tired of taking a back seat to some of these other riders. Well, I get the feeling loud and clear. You can see it in his eyes. He's so frustrated. I know he felt like this would be his year. And out of the points right now, he still wants to put that Honda up on the podium on the top spot. And 
Cubs do it again in the outdoors. Especially after winning at Houston and also winning at Tempe. Davey Coombs making his way to the podium to talk with Ezra. And then we'll have our second qualifying round coming up as well. That's all coming up next from the Metrodome. There's a place called Baseball City USA where heroes love hanging with fans. So anytime I can put this uniform on and go out there and play in front of a packed house, we'd realize how blessed we are. Fans in Baltimore, they're, they're, they're our 10th man. How can you get to Baseball City USA? Hey, you're already there. Baseball City USA. Catch 18 O's games in April, only on HTS. <laughs> Looking for appliances or home electronics? Nichols has it. Nichols Appliance carries the complete line of Amana products from gas and electric cooktops and ranges to refrigerators, washers, and dryers. How about home electronics? You bet. Nichols has TVs and stereos. Need service? Nichols does it. Who needs superstore headaches and hassles? Nichols got it all. Check out our newly expanded Percival store. Nichols Appliance, your source for savings for over 70 years. Check out the full line of Amana products at Nichols. Yeah, my name is Rick. Everybody calls me The Rick. And a lot of people make fun of sports enthusiasts. You know, they say, you know, you got to read, you know, like go read some Kafka or something. I, you know, I look at it as, hey, I don't know to read. I don't have to go read some book about a Cocker Spaniel, a guy who turns into a Cocker Spaniel. Cockroach? Is it, is it a Cocker? Whatever it is. You know? See, that's what I mean. Whatever the, the Kafka I've heard about him. I don't these four riders picking off the first transfer spots of the evening for the main event. Ezra Lust, the runaway win, one of his finest races since he won the main event in Houston. Wyndham Button and Brown also going to the main with Huffman LaRocco. A couple of big names moving on to the semifinals. Let's go down to Davey Coombs. Thanks, Art. Yogi, we were talking about the hand injury first. Tell us about that. Well, it's been five weeks tonight, and uh, my doctor told me it'd be healed in four weeks. And I thought I'd sit on my butt and not do anything, but... I've still been riding, and, uh, you know, every week there's some kind of obstacle or something that really hurts, and, and uh, this week there's not really nothing out here. All the jumps are good, and the landings are pretty good, so. Well, one thing, it's a short track, which means, to me, it looks like there's going to be a lot of lap riders. We saw that in your heat race. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe I'd already lap riders after four laps, but, uh, yeah, the track is really short. That really doesn't work too much to my advantage, but. Uh, uh, you know, it's going to be a sprint race, and I'll be ready for it. We wish you luck in the main event, Yogi. Thanks a lot. Jeremy McGrath, number two tonight, could become the first Supercross rider ever with five consecutive years at the same venue winning. He's four for four here in the Metrodome. Most of his runs run together, but uh, here in the Metro, only one really stands out, and that was last year. Well, Minneapolis was really special for me last year. I think it was my first win of the year, and to me, I was over ecstatic. You know, I mean, it's been it was seven race or eight race drought before I won a race, and and then I won here at Minneapolis. So, I mean, the fans here are really special to me, and and uh, overall memories. I mean, I've I've won a lot of races, so it's kind of hard to remember exactly which ones were which. But I know last year was a real good one for me. Well, Davey Combs, Jeremy McGrath, Larry Ward, Mikel Pichon, Doug Henry, Ryan Hughes, Michael Craig, Steve Lampson. No Jeff Emig in this one. That's correct. The defending AMA Supercross champion is not here tonight. Uh, everyone knows it's been a long year for Jeff. He's had problems with his concentration. We hear with his eyesight. This time it's his back, and it sounds pretty bad. I tried to get a hold of Jeff earlier this afternoon. He's back in Riverside, California at home. He's sitting this one out completely. Guys, I think he's looking forward to the first outdoor national in May. That could be true as we see Larry Ward, number four, the winner at Tampa. Michael Craig, number 13. Mikel Pichon, number 16. Here's Ryan Hughes, who's had a hard luck year, David. He has, but he's shown speed. And here on this hard packed surface, he really shines. He's Lots of locals in this second qualifying heat. Corey Keeney out of Oakdale, Minnesota. Voss and the hoop. Three kids out of uh, Minnesota that hope to make the main event here in our second qualifying round. Jeremy McGrath is at the point. Can he take the whole shot? Inside. It's Michael Craig, and McGrath goes down right in the middle of the whoop section. And you can see coming out of the first corner, he was getting pinched. He would have either had to back off or just take his chances. He took his chances, and there was no room for him. 
And so it's Michael Craig out in front with Larry Ward, Team Suzuki, hounding him. Number 17, Steve Lampson on Team Hondas. And then Ryan Hughes, number 10. Number 19 on the fourth stroke is Doug Henry. And that's all followed up by number 66 from Hudsonville, Michigan, Todd the Hoop, who's been an arena crosser all year long. Well, Mike Craig is so good at getting out to a great start. Staying in the lead for a little while, doesn't matter who's behind him, it could be McGrath, and he's still going to get out there and make it tough for everybody in those first few laps. For Mike, weakness is doing it for eight laps in the heat race, but all eight laps are all 20 laps of the main. He's definitely got the speed. Michael Craig, in fact, five riders in that lead pack as Jeremy McGrath tries to weed his way back. Looks like Jeremy might be settling for the semifinals. Watching his body posture a little bit. And, uh, it doesn't look like he's staying down. How the heck am I going to, in the heat race this tough, with all those names you mentioned at the start, how the heck am I going to get him to the top four? Take a little bit of energy, get to the semi. McGrath is in 15th place. And only seven laps to go here in our second qualifying round. The leaders across the finish line jump. And right now, anything could happen. It's close action. Craig having a little trouble there in the wolf section with Larry Ward behind him and Ryan Hughes moving into third with Henry and then Lampson. So Lampson starting to fade a bit as Pichon is behind Lammy. Six bikes, only four can make it to the main event, David. Yeah, it's going to be an exciting semi. It's going to have McGrath in it. Got count on that. Great shot of it. All the airtime these guys getting off the triple. Triples aren't as tough to do now because the face of those jumps aren't so rutted out like we've seen in the past few weeks. Henry finding his way around Lampson. Somebody saw him down at the finish line jump. It looks like Pat Reddy from St. Paul, Minnesota, number 624. So some of the local fans not too happy about that as we check out our leader from Honda of Troy. And Larry Ward is trying for that spot. Michael Craig getting all kinds of pressure. Larry rides really aggressive right now. And it surprised me a little bit. He went into that whoop section that I talked about being so tough. Just ahead of Ryan Hughes. That's where Ryan Hughes is at. He just pulled away from him. He seems pretty comfortable out there right now. Well, Michael Craig has always loved that hard pack. Let's go down to Davy Coach. Hey, I'm watching Jeremy McGrath. Let me tell you guys something. Remember, that's what Lust just said about the traffic. McGrath is having a hard time even jumping the triple jumps, let alone some of these combinations, because there's some really slow guys out there. He is definitely going to the semi. McGrath has moved up to about 14th position, but it's tough going once you get behind. And there you see number 13, our leader, going through the picture. And the Skycam from the roof of the Metrodome gives you a good idea of positioning coming off that triple. You see the line's good, too, especially through the roof section. That'd be an interesting shot to see what happened with McGrath. How that, he had no room at all. And, and Davey, you're, you're right. He's having a tough time. Henry and Hughes by the bar coming out of the corner now. Henry moves into third. Not that far from Michael Craig in first position and Larry Ward in second. Four laps to go here in our second qualifying game. I'm a little bit surprised with Henry. I thought that as quick as this track is and how technical it is, that he would have a tough time, but he's gaining on this guy. Oh, anything could happen, and we'll find out what does. The checkers will be waving for four more qualifiers when we return to the Metrodome. If you didn't get one of the cruisers on your left, then you didn't get the accessories on your right. Lucky for you, you have more time to get one of the bikes on your left and the accessories on your right. Bikes, accessories. Suzuki Fest 98 has been extended. It's now Cruise Don't Lose Days till May 31st. Hurry in and get your choice of $500 worth of accessories free and great deals like zero down or low APR financing on selected models. So march right in, left. For over 30 years, Cycle News has been the weekly newspaper for motorcycle race fans. Results are official, point standings are current, and race coverage is timely and complete. Oh, it was a great race, you know, I mean, it was an interesting race. And to win the last race and say, it's something I dreamed of when I was a little kid is to be a Supercross star. And Riding impressions, new products, events calendar, classified ads, and more. Cycle News, America's weekly motorcycle newspaper. Call 1-800-325-2925 or visit cyclenews.com on the World Wide Web. Ben Franklin discovered electricity in the sky, but he didn't know that it could be found on ice. He never watched hockey, and now he's dead. Watch the NHL on ESPN2.
before life passes you by. Catch the new season of Major League Soccer when the New York, New Jersey Metro Stars take on the Kansas City Wizards tonight at 8.30 on ESPN2. Jeremy McGrath has moved up to seventh, but he's running out of time rapidly. As we see the leaders right here, Mike Craig, Larry Ward, just looking for the opportunity, and right behind him, another anxious competitor. I think back to Daytona, and Henry didn't look like he was going to win that heat race with a couple of laps to go, still pulled it off. That was a tougher company than he's facing right now. McGrath, I think what he's doing is racing for game position in that semi. The more guys he passes, the better pick he gets. Larry Ward and Doug Henry behind him on the fourth stroke. Lee McCollum is Larry Ward's mechanic. Boy, oh, it was really interesting to see him earlier in the day with just breaking down that entire bike and putting it back together. They really do. Michael Craig still holding on to our lead with Ward in second place. And uh, right now, Henry really can't get by Ward. That's a tricky section right there, too. They, they weren't able to triple at that time, and Mike Craig did pull away a little bit. Now Ward's more worried about Henry, I think, in the final lap than Craig. White flag. Absolutely correct, David Bailey. The white flag is out on our final lap. Let's see what happens in the loop section now. Henry stalled up in the, in the air a little bit. Couldn't make up ground on Larry Ward. Craig still with a two-second lead on board. They got a batch of lap riders to deal with before the finish line. You see Craig right there getting held up just a little bit. Laps it in fourth. Hughes unable to make a move on him. None of those guys can do the triple that lap. So you can see everybody's right there. Ward's got an opportunity. The checkers from Michael Craig. Larry Ward in second. And this is the first heat race that Michael Craig has won since he took a podium finish in Tempe, Arizona at Sun Devil Stadium when he landed on the podium in third place. That was the only heat, other heat win of the year for number 13, Michael Craig. Well, it'll be anxious to hear Davy Combs talking with Michael when we return to the Metrodome here in Minneapolis. Hi, Bob Vila here with an exciting new hand tool from Sears, the Craftsman Pocket Socket Adjustable Box End Wrench. With a one-hand adjustment, you can lock onto nuts and bolts of almost any size, from 5 16ths to 3 quarters of an inch, or 8 to 18 millimeters. The closed box end clamps tight. Heat-treated steel construction makes it durable. And because it's a Craftsman hand tool, made in America, it's guaranteed forever. To order your Craftsman Pocket Socket, call 1-800-762-9999 now. It's what most men can only dream about. Powerful engines, rumbling exhausts, miles of chrome, and over 175 channels. Right now during Honda Dream Days, buy a Shadow or Magna. Get a satellite dish and six months of Direct TV. Or choose 7.9 APR with no down payment. So why dream when you can ride? Honda Dream Days ends May 31st. You'll even get a commemorative pin for showing up. A magazine success starts with the writers. Get me the lowdown on Jordan. What's his beef with the Bulls? And give me a piece on the Latin influence on baseball. Pedro Martinez, Omar Vizquel, with a preview on all 30 clubs. Comprende? Print it, baby! Take a look from Skycam here high above the Metrodome, and you can see the funnel into that corner, David. Well, the... The second rider from the top of your screen, right here in the middle, actually getting pinched is McGrath. He's got Todd DeHoop, number 66, on his right. Gets a little out of shape, bumps into McGrath. He high sides off the back of Mike Craig right there. Kind of touches his head on the back tire of Pichon. So that was a scary moment for McGrath, but he got up. He's okay, and he'll be in the semi. And the four riders getting the transfer to the main event. Michael Craig, Larry Ward, Doug Henry, and Steve Lampson. 
And as you said, David, what a semifinal with uh, McGrath coming all the way back to six, but also he'll be battling with Rhino and Pichon in the second semifinal round. Let's go down to Davey. All right, Stingray, welcome back up here on the podium. That's about the best I've seen you ride in a while. Yeah, you know, I feel like, uh, I don't know exactly how I felt. I know I've been working a little bit, working pretty hard. In Phoenix, I rode really good on my kind of dirt. I got injured, and uh, when they brought me back for my first race, it was Tampa, which was a mudder, Daytona, which was really brutal, and last week was Ruddy. So uh, I gave it all I got, which wasn't, I guess, that much, you know, with my bad starts, but this is my kind of dirt, and I think I'm gonna be on the podium are in the dirt. All right. Well, I tell you, we were looking over a couple of the mechanics stopwatches, and they were telling me you were doing a second a lap faster than Lusk who won that first heat. You know, uh, this rhythm section right here in the front, I couldn't do it maybe three times because of me clipping the first set of jumps, which I think slowed me up a little bit. So if I could do that every lap, you know, on the heat races are good, but I'm really, really pumped up right now. Phil Alderson, Eric, Eric Kehoe, my mechanic Marshall has done a great job. They always tell me, hey, you're the fastest out there, now I just gotta believe it. Well, it sounds like you believe it. You're guaranteed a podium win, or I'd rather a podium finish. Yeah, you know, I think I, I wanna believe it because I see all the, you know, I think it's probably 75,000 people here, and there are 75,000 Jeremy McGrath fans, and I want some of them. <laughs> <laughs> He's capable of uh, pulling some fans his way. ESPN2 rocks, thanks to the riders, the factories, and of course, you fans, as we have a sellout here at the Metrodome, it's a stretch run for the Supercross Championship, a must for you to catch in person. Here's where we'll be next week in St. Louis. The following week, it's the Silver Dome and Pontiac, and then back to Texas Stadium another year. That's on the 25th. And at Texas Stadium, that uh, presentation and television will also be on ABC, as well as ESPN2. The grand finale, then, a sure sellout at Las Vegas, which also includes the 125 shootout. Uh, lots of money on the line when the riders from the East and West get together for that 125 shootout. In fact, Kevin Windham took a look at the prize money. David Bailey says, hey, how do I get back to the 125s? Well, the heat action, David Bailey, very exciting as Ezra Lusk, uh, he just took out and got the whole shot. Right, well, you know, everybody says how important the start is, but Lusk hasn't won anything I can think of since he got the whole shot in Houston, so the start makes a big difference for him. And Wyndham then proved that uh, he started about sixth position, but he did find a way to pass on that track that not too many people could find. Right, it, that's been the only thing I've heard so far about the track tonight. Not, not only the fact that it's fast, lap times are, are low, but it's just very one line, very hard to pass because there's no rut. So those guys get a one line developed. They can't find anywhere around uh, somebody that's faster, and Wyndham did, so that's going to make a big difference in the main. Proof positive that anything can happen to anyone on the track. Jeremy McGrath going down in the woods. Uh, it was just, uh, he had a gamble right there and try to go for the lead. Usually that works for Jeremy. He can just squirt right through the middle, but it didn't work for him tonight. And it, the fact that he's got to go to the semi, it doesn't, I'm not worried he can make it to the main. But it, he's going to have a different routine here tonight, and that just opens the door for somebody like Wyndham or Lusk to sneak in there and grab a win. And in that second qualifying, he just gave the break to Michael Craig, who likes the hard pack anyway, and Henry showed some speed. Henry and, and, Jeff and Larry Ward both showed a lot of speed. That was a great group, and I, I thought it was kind of funny from Craig saying, well, you know, when it was muddy, it didn't do any good. Daytona was saying it didn't do any good. So basically on the easy tracks, Craig's fast. <laughs> what happens now? we got Jeff Emig out with an injury, a uh, very sore back. Uh, we've got Albertine out with a neck injury. We've got Phil Lawrence with a, a broken collarbone in four places. Uh, it's thinning down a little bit. Well, that just makes a, more opportunities for the privateers to get into the main event and uh, makes it a little bit easier to qualify out of the heat races in the semis. The guys don't have to push so hard, and although McGrath's got to go to a semi, the competition won't be quite as heavy. McGrath going to make you things interesting here in the semifinal round as we go to that next here from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Hey, I'm Jeremy McGrath from Team 1-800 Collect. How would you like to hang with me at the Supercross Championship in Las Vegas? 1-800 Collect wants to give you and a friend a chance to watch me race in Vegas on May 2nd. So just pick up the May issue of Dirt Bike or Motocross Action for sweepstakes entry details. 1-800 Collect supports motocross, and now they want to help you get to the big race in May. So don't forget, dial 1-800 Collect. It's a winner, and you could be too.
technology, it's all around us. And if you don't understand it, you're already behind. That's why ITT Tech is a better choice than ever before. With degree programs that offer technical theory and applications. Technology. Recognize its importance. Find out what ITT Tech can offer you. Take control with a degree from ITT Tech. For more information, call 1-800-942-0099 today. Although the GSX-R750 just won back-to-back -back AMA Supersport Championships and the GSX-R600 had the most AMA 600 Supersport victories, we weren't satisfied. We made over 20 major improvements to the 600 and gave the 750 electronic fuel injection. Now even its shadow can't keep up. The GSX-R600 and the GSX-R750 from Suzuki. No rider in the history of Supercross has won the title without winning at least one Supercross. Jeremy McGrath with a good start, but it's Jeff Emig with the whole shot. Jeremy McGrath still back in second place. Jimmy Button's got the inside move and is challenging for the lead. McGrath not giving up. They both up by Emig. Oh, my goodness. Jimmy Button and McGrath bar the bar. Button in first place. Jeremy McGrath's going to show him a wheel or two here on the inside. Jeremy McGrath, his second lead of the Supercross season. That was so smart. He'd been getting close to Button every time. Set him up. Button went wide. Jeremy just went wide. Took the line away. And here's the checkered flag. Jeremy McGrath, his 24th career Supercross win, his first of 97. He said it was coming. The last three races, he felt it. But here tonight, a very, very happy Jeremy McGrath. A big moment for Suzuki and, of course, Jeremy McGrath right here in Minneapolis last year. Well, they did some manicuring of the track. Let's go down to Davey. Uh, thanks, Art. I'm down here with Rich Wrinkler. He's the guy who takes care of the whole track. Rich, we noticed you guys cutting the whoops down here in between the heat races and the semis. What's the strategy behind that? Well, we were watching those first uh, heats, and they, there got to be a big line here on the left that was so deep, it was the only way to go down the whoops. And with as short a lap times as we had here, we knew there'd be a lot of lappers, and passing would be a problem. So we decided to go over on the right side where they were big and round them off a little bit to try to make this downhill side of the whoops more even. Do you feel like you have it now, or are we going to see you guys back out here before the main event? Well, we, we think we got it, but we're going to watch these semis now and see if anybody chooses going down the right. And if it works good, we'll leave it. If not, we may come on the uphill side here and try to doctor them up a little bit, too. All right, thanks, Rich. We'll let you and Mark Barnett get back to work. All right, thanks. Davey, do you think, uh, do you think it'll do that? You know what, guys? Down here looking at it, I can see what he's talking about. There's a definitive rut on the left side of the track. So what you do is you square off the corner and come on to the left. On the right, it was really sharp, but now it's mellowed out. Maybe we'll see some passing through here. David? Yeah, it's a good strategy, and it's just to try to, like he said, even it out through the whoops. I've, I've said already before that the, the whoops are, are uh, the one, you know, I guess, the place where you can make or lose a lot of time out here on this track. And if they're all using one side of it, it sort of defeats the purpose. So even it out so you can go anywhere you want. David, we've got a lot of airtime on this track, the hard pack and so forth, as we take a look at the Suzuki track map. Well, for the first time since, uh, I don't know, three or four rounds, we've got back to a long start into a sharp left-hand corner. We're going to see some action there. Then into the whoop section we were just talking about, a right-hander into a mini triple, then the first big triple. Down the straightaway, lots of double jumps into a kind of a new rhythm section leading up to the, to the other triple at the bottom of your screen. Around behind the starting line, We've got what's turned into a triple. I don't think they intended it to be, but the guys are getting over there quick. Right-hander over a double, cross a starting line, and a kind of a fast sweeper left into one of the most spectacular finish line jumps we've had all year. 30-second board is up for our first semifinal round with Damon Huffman. Mike LaRocca, you see him right there as we zero in on number five on the factory connection Honda. John Sebastian Wah. At Foster, Ryan Terlecki, Ovolny, Caton, Tilton, Anderson, a local named Smith, Kelly Smith, and they're off. Our first semifinal round is underway. Number 15, Damon Huffman, a big jump. Huffman through the whoops. Let's see how they handle those whoops. Looks like they're able to go pretty much anywhere, and Terlecki had the bar inside the way Lush controlled the corner in his heat race. Huffman went wide and still held on to the lead. Terlecki and Povolny, second and third behind Huffman. Morocco is five bites. Get back to them. 
So David Huffman taking the decisive turn here in the first semifinal round. And Ryan Terlicki from Salem, Oregon on the Suzuki in second place. James Pavoni, his hometown fans have got to be excited for this KTM rider. From Donna Heights, Minnesota in third. Looks like he was making a little adjustment there as he went across the starting line. Back up to speed now, and I, I sure would have thought that LaRocco would have gotten a better start than he got in the semi. It's not that many guys up there that get great starts, like you see in the heat race or in the main event. Nevertheless, he's still charging. LaRocco in eight place right now. He still has time, lots of time left with five laps to go. So it's up to Billy Pavoli, the top three. Second week in a row, Huffman going to the semi. Went to the semi in New Orleans and came out with a podium finish in the main, so it doesn't seem to bother him. Just gets more time out there on the racetrack. Jeremy McGrath can have to do the same thing. And remember, the top five now get the transfer to the main event. Well, this track has been designed for Huffman's style, don't you think, with his great timing and, uh, and the rhythm that he puts to his, uh, his movements? Absolutely. He's just drawn a huge lead here in the first semifinal round. I would have expected if Morocco would have gotten off right there with him, I would expect those guys to battle. This way you see Morocco working his way up through the field. He's an eight. Over the big triple. He's almost, uh, I'd say he's about a third of a lap already behind. That's the difference the start makes. Up and working his way across the starting line with the signal. This, this week you can see that signal pretty good. In a little time, you pop up over that double jump and the mechanics right there. Well, will Mike Morocco have to go to the last chance qualifier? We'll find out because the checkers are just around the corner. Reason number 101 to buy a Burke home. Oh, my little angel is still sleeping. The original silent floor system comes standard in every Burke home. Reason number 76 to buy a Burke home. Quality heard, insulated windows are standard in every Burke home. There was no stop, you know, there was, uh, it was overboard, you know, it was getting, drink until I was sick and throwing up and, and swearing I would never do it again. When you need help, Charter is here and you can call us anytime. Charter is more than just a hospital. We have lots of treatment options and lots of ways to make them work for you, whether it's days after work or on weekends. I got hope when I went into treatment that there was a, actually a way to stop. If you have a problem with alcohol or drugs, don't wait to call. If you don't get help at Charter, please, get help somewhere. It was a day, it can get a little stressful around here. Luckily, we've got a guy who lights things up a bit. I like to think of him as our sports center doctor. When Kenny and I return on Sports Center, we will take a closer look at... After all... Laughter is the best medicine. Welcome back to our first semifinal round in qualifying for tonight's main event from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Huffman Terlicki has moved into second place, Pavoni in third. So Terlicki, 61, holds on to that second place. With Pavoni in third, Hart in fourth, Walk in fifth, and LaRocco now in sixth place. He needs to advance one more. He has to pass number 80, John Sebastian Walk, in order to get the transfer to the main event. There's no guarantee that he's going to do that, but I would bet on it. And uh, I think Terlicki, before the end of this race, these races are shorter. I think Terlicki's going to see that number five coming from behind here pretty soon. <laughs> LaRocco pushed out of the top five with a 12th place finish in Daytona and going down, LaRocco, number five, all kinds of problems. Well, scratch that. I don't think Terlicki will see number five now. He's went down right after the, he's got a really tough camel up and then a double off. He's leaning into that corner. Didn't come up, came up a little bit short rather and uh, running went right out from underneath him. So just, like I said, there's no guarantee. Very disappointing. I'm sure he's got a lot of fans here, being from South Bend, Indiana. White flag is out. And we're about set for the final lap of action. Terlicki coming across, seeing the white flag. 
Morocco in seventh place. He's got a lot of work to do in his last lap. He doesn't get the main or it's the last chance qualifier. So look, he's using the left side all the way down that loop section. So these guys are still, at least the, the guys we're seeing in this shot are still favoring the left two there. Mark Barnett and Rich Winkler are both over there discussing what they're going to do next. That would be able to fix it so it's more even. They're right there at the loop section where David Coombs talked with them earlier. As David Huffman looks for the checkered flag, gets it, easily wins the semifinal. So Huffman, after his best finish of the year, his only podium last week at the Superdome in New Orleans, a third place finish, comes back to win the semifinal round just like he did that night. Huffman, Turlicky, Pavoni, Waugh, and Hart, it looks like, will be the official finishers going on to the main event. And so David Coombs will be over to talk to David Huffman. And Mike Morocco heads to the LCQ. We'll be right back. Honda dealers are offering 7.9% financing and no down payment on all new Valkyries. Virtually everyone who applies for this Visa credit card will be approved. If you meet these minimum requirements, you will be approved for this unsecured Visa credit card. This means you're not required to pay a security deposit to obtain your Visa credit card, even if you've been turned down before and regardless of your past credit history. Now you can be approved for the credit you need with no security deposit required. This is a limited time offer. Find out if you're among the thousands who will be approved for this no-risk unsecured Visa credit card. Call our toll-free number now. NHL tonight, Tuesday through Saturday at eleven thirty, only on ESPN two. Out of the first semifinal round, transferring to the main event, we've got uh, Damon Huffman, Terlecki, Pavoni, Waugh, and Hart. The top five out of that first semifinal. And Davey Combs now is with Huffman, who, did he break a sweat at all, Davey? No, it doesn't look like he broke much of a sweat. Now listen, Damon, last week you got on the podium. You looked really solid in New Orleans. Did that change your attack any this week? But, I mean, you look really fluid. It's even in your heat race, even though you didn't get in the qualifying directly, you still look pretty good. Yeah, I've been uh, riding really good lately, uh, even all year long. Uh, just last week, I've been, I got a great start all last week and again today, and hopefully I can do another one in the main event. Now, with, as far as the main event goes, do you think it's important to have a far inside starting position or right in the middle? Well, inside uh, is going to be good. Um, probably from the box over, uh, the first turn's really tight, so it's all it's going to be whoever gets there first. All right, thank you, Damon. Thank you. We've only had one winner this year of a main event come out of the semifinals as we take a look at Jeremy McGrath, who is hoping to repeat that sort of history. There's Larry Brooks to the right, the team manager, and Randy Lawrence, his mechanic, just behind him. What a great uh, team that is, David Bailey. It is, and I think uh, what Brooks is talking about here is how they've changed the whoops. McGrath hasn't seen it. The riders aren't allowed to walk out there and look. Brooks was there, and he talked with Winkler and, and Barnett, who made those changes, is letting them know. Look, remember where you went down in your heat race? Well, that's all fixed now, so. Two weeks in a row, we've got single-digit guys going to the LCQ. LaRocco out of that last one, and Emig last week, uh, Davey Coombs. Uh, Jeremy Albrecht right now, this is Jeff Emmett's mechanic. Now, we know that Jeff had a horrible week last week. He had to go to the last chance qualifier, just like we saw LaRocco here. But tell me, where's he at tonight? Well, he uh, stayed home. We went to the chiropractor, and it hasn't been working. It's been hurt back for probably two weeks now. And it hasn't been getting any better going the races, so uh, he had an MRI and all kinds of stuff to figure out what's wrong with it. And hopefully they'll find out on Monday exactly what it is, and uh, he'll be back next week. Hopefully, if not, we got to get him going for the outdoors, and uh, at least so he feels good when he's out here riding. 
teammate. Thank you, Davey. And Jeremy is Jeremy McGrath, who's hoping that another single-digit rider doesn't have to go to the LCQ. I've seen him win a main event after winning the LCQ, but he certainly wants to avoid it right now as the board is sideways and we're set to go for the second semifinal qualifying round. Jeremy accelerates, blasting out of there to the inside Hughes. They don't connect. It's Mikel Pichon, though, in the whoop section, number 16. Jeremy McGrath to the inside, boxes his mount on the turn. Jeremy McGrath, Mikel Pichon, Ryan Hughes. That's the top three. It's Corey Keeney, a local favorite right here from Oakdale, Minnesota, in the fourth position. Hey, Jeremy just showed us what is the best way to handle the whole shot. Don't get on the brakes too early and have everybody get up there next to you. Just go hard into the corner, use the berm, get a good drive out of the corner, and control the right-hand side of the loop. Don't let people on both sides of you do. And if somebody does get it close like the shown did, you control the inside of the next corner. Came out in the lead. Jeremy McGrath continues to lead number two. It'll be interesting to see how he goes through this section now. Staying to the left. Yeah, you can see him. They're getting right in that rut there. They, they will go out there and dress that up some and make it more even so the guys use the whole straightaway. Our sky, one line. From our sky cam on the triple lead. Black Bulls far side of this great crowd here in Minneapolis. Trying to hold with. Jeremy McGrath is Mikel Pichon, number 16. Ryan Hughes in third. And then we've got Corey Keeney from Oakdale, Michigan. And then right behind him from Prior Lake, Michigan, or I should say Minnesota, is Heath Boss. So Keeney and Boss, both Gophers, Golden Gophers here in the Metrodome, going at it. Pichon staying close to McGrath here. Not letting him go. You can see McGrath did a good job of trying to hop up over that one big group in the middle. Using a little bump before to hop over the big one, try to maintain that momentum. If you hit the big one too square, you pop up in the air when you land. You start that up and down motion, lose, lose all your forward drive. Taking a look at Jeremy. He calls this a fun track. He smiles when you start talking about Minneapolis, Minnesota. Not just because he's won four for four. He loves the dirt, and he loves the size of track. Well, every time you win four races in a row here, this is some combination out there that agrees with you. It's very technical. We talked about that in semi one in the favor of Huckman. McGrath, Huckman, I'd say Lust, and also Kevin Windham. All those guys have that, that uh, excellent balance out there. That does be shown. An ability to figure things out quick and good timing, and that's required on a track like this. McGrath, hoping he sees the checkers when we return to the Metrodome. This simple-looking device is the key to unlock your body's hidden potential. Introducing the Bowflex Power Pro. Bowflex uses patented power rod resistance to give you an incredibly smooth, natural feel for over 60 different health club quality exercises. It's time to get the body you want with no money down and payments as low as $33 a month. Call right now for your free video and brochure. Discover the body you've always wanted with the Bowflex Power Pro. You race. You got tools. You race. You got a lot of tools. You race. You gotta have a place to put those tools. Now when you buy a new 1998 Honda CR125R or CR250R, you'll get a 12-drawer Craftsman Professional Tool Chest worth $600. You race. Honda and Craftsman help you win. Hello, I'm Netboy, live from ESPN Sports Zone via XPG 46 Digital CompuCamp. You know, you can check out all the big basketball games live with play-by-play -play graphics on NBA Gamecast. Hey, I do it all the time. Yo, Furman, get out of my cheese puffs. Those are my cheese puffs. Furman! Our deck with David Bailey, Davey Coates from the Metrodome in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and we focus in right now on Rhino. It's got to be a little bit demoralizing for Rhino right now to see... Both Pichon and McGrath pull away. They're pulling away about a second a lap. The semi doesn't mean everything. Ryan Hughes in third place. The crowd ooing and awing as Jeremy cuts through some lappers now, going through the whoop section, and Pichon has picked up some time. And that's what they're what those oohs are for. Their favorite boy, McGrath, they've never seen him lose here. They're going, what's this number two thing all about on the number plate? Every race that's been run here in the Metrodome, Jeremy McGrath has won in 250 ranks. Getting by the lap is pretty cool. They're just excited to see a battle. Again, Michonne is making it close. 
Hughes and he continue to pull away a little bit from Hughes. So he'll go in there, watch videotape, and then Big Rig get things figured out for the main. It's starting to make a big difference there. Oh, look at the acceleration. Great shot. You saw the white flag flying in the air now. One lap to go for Jeremy McGrath here in the second qualifying heat. Last week, Pichon had a good start in third, but he faded to eight. He hasn't faded too bad much here in the semifinal. Uh, what he's done is continue to kick off good laps. Off that triple, starting to look at the fans, get them into it, and Pichon decided to just back it down a little bit after a mistake. Slight mistake, let McGrath get away, so no last lap action here. And a good ride as we zero in on Ryan Hughes, better known as Rhino. He's had a difficult season, but he's in third right now. Moss is in fourth in fifth. So Rhino just cruising now, McGrath over the big finish line jump. <laughs> That's fun right there. The checkered flag. McGrath winning the semifinal. And it's the first time that he has gone to a semifinal round to qualify for a main event this year. A guy who's been on the podium every time, but one time on the season. Had to go the extra route this time. We'll check out the official listings of which five riders make it to the uh, main event out of our second semifinal round right after this. finish of the year. Today, Microsoft makes the Internet faster. Today, the next wave in Internet software is free for a month. Today, you can get online faster and go where you want in no time. Today, the Internet is just a click away. It was the best of times. See for yourself. MSN Premier is free for a month when you call 1-800-533-2582. Microsoft helps you make the most of the Internet right on your Windows 95 base PC with sound, motion, and more. Send email that gets through. Get the news as it happens. Plan and book a trip. Manage your investments. And find exactly what you want with Microsoft Internet Explorer. Call 1-800-533-2582 for your free month today. You'll get a free CD with the latest internet software from Microsoft. It's just really extraordinary to see what you can do. And unlimited hours online. Free for a month. So call today, and you're on your way. Take everything you ever knew about cruiser or motorcycles. Everything you ever learned from your older brother, your friends, biker movies. And throw it out. Because the Marauder is a cruiser like no other, one only a high-performance company could have built. The Suzuki Marauder. It's time to move on. Now until May 31st, move on to your Suzuki dealer and get $500 in free accessories and great financing on a Marauder. Well, it's not quite the full Monty, but it's for Jeremy McGrath. You don't think he's popular here in Minneapolis, Minnesota? Jeremy McGrath winning the second semifinal qualifying. And take a look here now. Nothing's for sure even if you have a big lead. Well, just jumping right up in there on the top of that plateau. The lapper didn't know he was coming that quick, and the good uh, reflexes there to keep it up on two wheels. <laughs> McGrath, Bichon, Rhino, Voss, and Keeney qualify going to the main event, so only the one big name, LaRocco, having to go to the LCQ. Let's go down to Davey. Well, usually about this time of the night, you're sitting in the back maybe having a cool drink, maybe signing a couple autographs. Not tonight. you got to work. Yeah, I kind of went down on my heat race. Uh, Todd DeHoop and I kind of connected bars, and I went down on the whoops at the start. But I don't know. It's it's kind of a fast track, really fast lap times. It's not too tiring. It's just get you winded, so it's good to stay warm. Hey, what about when that lap rider almost knocked you down there? We just saw a replay of that. Yeah, I went over the finish there, and I came inside, and the guy didn't jump up the step up, and I jumped up, and he looked like he was going to go one way, and he went the other way, and I ran right into him. Luckily, I didn't go down. And finally, how do you feel about the main event? This doesn't phase you at all, having to ride a semi? No, I'm not. Hey, you got to ride one semi a year. I feel good. <laughs> ride the shortest one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Look at that smile, David Bailey. I think he, you can yeah. see that he's having fun. Our next telecast will be from the Trans World Dome in St. Louis. Uh, you see the date and time on your screen. Hope you can be with us.
Last year, seven different winners. With six races to go this year, five different winners. So it's going to be interesting what comes out of today's race here at the Minneapolis Metrodome. Before we get to the 250 main, it's back to the 125 West. That's after six weeks of the 125 East Ricky Carmichael show. Only one point divides John Dowd from David Villeman with two races left of the 125 Western schedule. We'll be right back. It's Kawasaki's Motorcycle Meltdown. We're talking about cash back or dynamite financing on select late model Kawasaki's. Price melting cash back on ZX6 Sport Bikes, race bred ZX6Rs, and formidable ZX9Rs. We're even dealing on Vulcan 1500 Cruisers. Four qualified buyers can choose zero down low interest financing. Get to Kawasaki's Motorcycle Meltdown now. See your Kawasaki dealer Cycle Sport Kawasaki at 632 Grant Street in Herndon near Dulles Airport. Come on, get away. It's time for a little Lansdowne. Lansdowne Resort, less than an hour from DC. Come on, get away. It's time for a little Lansdowne. Come to Lansdowne for just $99 per person with their whatever the weather package. With ESPN Magazine coming out, I really hope they take every precaution to avoid the coveraging situation. Something that's plagued me my entire career. Tiger Beat in 93, I sprained my ankle. Model Railroad in 96, I went into a five game slump. Cat Fancy almost ended my career. I know one thing, I'm never doing Cat Fancy again. While we were away, the four-lap last chance qualifier took place, and two Mikes were able to qualify. Mike LaRocco and Mike Caton, the privateer out of Ohio, are the final two qualifiers for tonight's 250 main event. We've got lots of excitement, though, before we get to the 250s. The pressure of the tight points race in the 125 Western Division. As we take a look at the Suzuki point standings, John Dowd with the win in San Diego taking a one-point lead over Frenchman David Villeman. Fellow Frenchman Stefan Roncata of Honda of Troy in third, FMF's David Pingree and Nathan Ramsey rounding out the top five. But what emotion as we see number 934, David Villeman, who has been except a seventh in the opener when he had a bad cold, has been simply outstanding with three straight wins and a second place. Dowd stayed busy during the 125 Western break, riding 250s while Villeman went home to race in the French championships. Both expect the title chase to go down to the final race. Yeah, now it's my goal because uh, the GP in uh, Indonesia was cancelled and sure I can win this title, but John is very strong and uh, when he gets a bad start, he's always come, come up on the podium. So it's very difficult to take uh, some distance with him. And I think uh, it's, it will be uh, two good races. And um, I hope to, to finish uh, ahead of me because uh, I want this title. Um, I'm sure he won too. <laughs> but, so it, it would be a, a good battle. Yeah, I've been, uh, I've been staying busy riding at 250, I think. Um, for me, that was hopefully it was a good move. You know, I think uh, in the past years, it's it seems like if I don't ride, you know, continuously or whatever, I, I get to feeling kind of rusty. So um, I was riding a 250, you know, on all the off weekends here, and uh, made it through all the all the weekends with no major, you know, problems. And uh, so I'm looking forward to getting out here tonight. Surveying the track, and we see number three in the point standings, Stefan Roncata. He's never been out of the top five, but he hasn't been able to get a win or even equal his total of two wins last year. So he could kind of throw a monkey wrench into this race. He can definitely have an effect on the points chase if he gets in between Villeman and Dowd. And he won his heat race. Uh, no problem over Ryan Huffman. Looks good so far tonight. And once again, Villeman back over here winning the parade lap. <laughs> that warm-up <laughs> lap he uses at full speed. 
Just yeah. like another practice lap, David. Yeah, he just went out there and jumped everything. He almost landed on the back of Vallejo off one of the triples. He was just riding all three of them, and Villeman comes at full speed. Dowd, on the other hand, went very slow and took a long look at all the sections, all the ruts and berms developing. There you see John Dowd, Brian Berry's mechanic, trying to keep loose. He looks really focused. He was out there in the tunnel. I mean, he jogged in place for four or five minutes, working up a good sweat, getting his heart rate up. Because you don't want to go out there, start the race cold. So important for your thinking, the decision making, and uh, really injury prevention. Too. If you were happen to go down early in that, like McGrath did in his heat race, you could get hurt by not being warmed up and stretched. Well, let's check out the uh, track conditions. Davey Combs? You know, you were talking about David Bielman winning that heat or after the uh, parade lap, David. That might not have been the best strategy, because I'm telling you guys, Although the track was really hard pack earlier, it's breaking down a little bit, and there's a lot of little ruts, a lot of little places to get yourself snake bit if you're not careful. We'll see what happens to Bielman. Travis Preston also in this lineup, number 94. He took a second in his heat race, a far cry from winning the LCQ to get into the opener, and then he failed to qualify in Houston, but he has come around, Travis Preston. Ryan Huffman also there. Jeffrey Willow, Sean Perolio, David Pingree, Eric Vallejo, Jason McCormick fast but having trouble staying up. David Villeman starting from just this side of the starter's box. We're ready to go for the 125 main event. Oh, what a charge for the whole shot money. Willow, number 39. He'll get the whole shot money, but look at Dowd. Dowd on the outside going through the ropes. Pingree is also mixed up in that uh, group along with Preston as they battle for the second spot. Just sheer determination and desire from John Dowd. I mean, he just came out of that first corner. He, he actually pushed Billman all the way up high, won that battle through the whoop. Now he's got the lead, and Billman's way back. He's in seventh place, David. Making a move. He gets by Pingree for sixth place already. So smooth on this track. It's important for Dowd now to keep the pace up. I can tell you that his mechanic will not let him look backwards. He's going to keep him focused ahead, give him lap times, keep him focused on everybody but Villeman. If he starts looking back, you start to attract those people. The 125 Western season, their first race in San Diego. That was back on February 7th, six weeks ago. We'll have to wait for St. Louis to see if Ricky Carmichael can continue his five-race string in the East. But right now, the West, these guys look warmed up. They look ready. Here's the battle for second place. Willow, number 18 is Ron Potter, who made an easy wheelie going by. He yeah, just had to get over that double jump. And Villeman is right behind them and for it. Villeman climbed up there quick, but he's still, now by my count, up six seconds back from Dowd already. That's how important it was. They were side by side in the first corner, and by Dowd, muscling his way in there, controlling that, that lead. He's got a big advantage right now. Dowd, this is the very first time he's had this position of the, the lead. So dominant anyway, as Villeman has a little trouble there in the uh, whoop section. But he gets uh, by and moves up another notch. So Villeman getting by Willow, now is in third behind Roncana. Willow trying to fight back on him. Willow putting up a good fight, too. Got the inside. Could have been a little bit more aggressive there. Put him out to the outside. They didn't have to. He still controls that position. So Villeman having to work real hard to get around Willow. We knew this track would not be easy to pass on. And while this is going on, and Villeman finally just says, hey, get out of the way. I got places to go. <laughs> During all that, Dowd pulled away even more. It slowed him up just enough for Dowd to get a probably another second and a half lead. Well, for Dowd right now, he's got Ron Cotta pushing him. Ron Cotta and Dowd both winning their heat races, both establishing the pace. Now it's a clear track back to Villeman. I think he can close the gap. Passing is a different story, though. Dowd looking for his third win of the season. Ron Cotta looking for his very first win. And seven seconds back, David Villeman trying to catch up, getting back in that points race. Who will win the checkers? Oh, we'll be back in a moment to find out. the beginning. 
Hi, Bob Vila here with an exciting new hand tool from Sears, the Craftsman Pocket Socket Adjustable Box End Wrench. With a one-hand adjustment, you can lock onto nuts and bolts of almost any size, from 5 16ths to 3 quarters of an inch, or 8 to 18 millimeters. The closed box end clamps tight. Heat-treated steel construction makes it durable. And because it's a Craftsman hand tool, made in America, it's guaranteed forever. To order your Craftsman Pocket Socket, call 1-800-762-9999 now. RPM tonight, Monday through Saturday at 7 and Sunday at 12 and 8, only on ESPN2. Welcome back to the 125 main event from Minneapolis, Minnesota. There's John Dow, Team Yamaha. Dow winning the race in San Diego, but he came from behind to take the lead. In his battle with Villeman, they actually battled for second place most of the time back and forth before Dow, when the most foolish white men just went out and grabbed that win away from everyone else, John Dow. But Stefan Montana has not made any mistakes behind him, David. No, he's right there waiting for one. That's what it's going to take because I don't see any place on the track where Ron Cotter's any faster. And Dow, you know, to be able to ride a 250 during the break, come back in here and ride a 125, it's not quite as fast, easier to stop, easier to turn, lighter, and you can muscle it around more, it's giving him a lot of confidence. Dow has actually picked up another second on Billiman. Maybe the pushing of Ron Cotta is helping. It's definitely helping. It's keeping him focused. And of course, Dow just wants to stay. There was the mistake. The mistake is made. Just as I was starting to say something, here comes Stefan Roncada. Well, now, Villeman can smell it. He's looking up there, seeing down, making mistakes. Well, Roncada told us before the race, I got nothing to lose. You know, right now, I have nothing to lose because I'm pretty far back in points, and uh, I had a couple of bad races at the beginning of the year, some bad luck and just bad races, you know. And uh, the only thing I want to do now is win those two last races in the 125 and, uh, and prove that uh, I can win, you know. And uh, I'm just going to go 110% out there and try to win. That's the only thing I can do now. And I maybe go to the church and, uh, and pray that somebody has a mechanical problem or something. I had some, some bad luck, you know, maybe now it's time for the others to have bad luck. So that's the only thing I have to do. leading this race here in Minneapolis. John Dowd is behind him, and Villeman now is starting to pick up some time. Let's go down to Davey Coombs. Hey, thanks. I'm with Sean Perska. This is Stefan's mechanic. Hey, did Stefan come in here saying he's going to win this thing no matter what? Yeah, he came in tonight with a lot less pressure than they had in the first five races, because he's in good now, and he's the underdog, and he'll be able to come from behind. So with anybody, anybody will tell you that's a lot less pressure on him than trying to pat him away. Stefan Roncada last year winning at St. Louis and winning at Pontiac. And another big uh, highlight to the story right now is that Villeman has cut the lead of John Dowd down to about two and a half seconds behind Roncada. Dowd's race has just gone down the tubes. And they're getting into lappers right now. This last couple of laps, he's made mistakes. He hasn't gone for the triple. And that's just allowed Villeman to climb all over. And there they are just locked together right now. And you got to think that the way of Villeman's car, he's going to pass him too. And I, I have to, I'm going to go out and take a little chance here and say, I think that when Dowd is angry, when he gets mad, fired up, that's when he rides his best. And boy, this mechanic needs to get him mad in that mechanics area right now. Put something on the board and get him fired up. He yeah. needs to get back in there. That full dog tenacity he had in the last race of the 125 West season. Another Bill mistake. Villeman still trying to get around the lappers to get to him. Yeah, what could have happened here, and you, just, you never know, but it's possible that Dowd got out there, established the lead, got a little bit tight. Maybe his arms are pumped up a little bit right here. It's a hard thing to notice, but he definitely made more mistakes. His timing is different, and with more pressure, that makes that arm pump situation even worse. Dowd trying desperately 
to stay in front of Billman. If he should do so, that would mean he would have a three-point lead going into the final race of the year for the 125 West season in Dallas. If Billman should take Dowd, he would have a two-point advantage going into the final race. Well, Billman's been there for the past couple laps, and Dowd hasn't let him close the gap anymore. So maybe he will start to get... Uh, relax, get a second win. Makes a good decision to get around that lap rider. Yeah, a little bit better timing through that big double jump section leading into that corner. Jeffrey Baker now sandwiched between the two title contenders. And Ron Cotta. That's a break for Ron Cotta because he's gone through the work section very well, way out in front. See a great shot of what the riders are seeing head through that root through section. Up into that berm, onto the triple. Both guys over it clean. Billman's putting the pressure on, and Dow's handling it so far. A five-second lead for Ron Cotta in the leader. Leadership position right now as we take a look at the battle for second between John Dowd and David Billman. What will happen here is if Dow can hold him off for a little while, two or three more laps, he'll start to not worry as much. And for Billman, he'll start thinking, he'll start getting a little bit of a panic going, thinking, dang, I caught this guy that fast. Why can't I get around and start trying things? And that's when you can start making mistakes. The doubt has got to keep the pressure on Billman right here to make that pass. Brian Berry and Wayne Smith, the respective mechanics for their two riders, really giving him the uh, heave ho as they go by the mechanics area. By the bar, a little scratch right there with the handlebars and John Dowd got that tenacity back again and came out of the corner on top. And he got a little extra boost too by being able to jump that triple. Billman having to go for the double, so he got a little bit of space there. That'll help him relax for a minute. But he can only double that one. Well, Billman does too, so it'll stay the same. We'll be going to the final race of the year with the 125 West Points lead still up in the air. Or will Dowd have an advantage? Will Rencata come through with his first win of the season? The checkers will fly when we return to Minneapolis. AMA Supercross is being brought to you by Motorcycle Mechanics Institute, quality training for the motorcycle industry. Line up every ATV Honda has ever built, and they would stretch from our factory in Ohio to the deserts of California. But in 28 years, we've never built one like this. The first ATV with ESP, push-button electric shift program, full digital display, and the most powerful engine we've ever put in an ATV. The Honda Foreman ES. We've just added something new to a very long line. Virtually everyone who applies for this Visa credit card will be approved. If you meet these minimum requirements, you will be approved for this unsecured Visa credit card. This means you're not required to pay a security deposit to obtain your Visa credit card, even if you've been turned down before and regardless of your past credit history. Now you can be approved for the credit you need with no security deposit required. This is a limited time offer. Find out if you're among the thousands who will be approved for this no-risk unsecured Visa credit card. Call our toll-free number now. After last year's early elimination, Team USA is back with a vengeance. Andre Agassi leads the U.S. team against Kafelnikov and the Russians in the first round of the Davis Cup. Deciding match tomorrow at 4, only on ESPN2. Welcome back to the 125 main here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Hard at David Bailey, Davey Combs, Ron Cotta, number 18, has moved out to a big lead. Now the pressure makes a big difference. We already heard his mechanics say it feels like he's riding with less pressure. That helps you ride to your potential. You can ride a little bit more relaxed. And I've been in his position before where I wasn't in the points chase, but certainly a contender in the race, and you really don't want to get in there between those guys. You're motivated to just you know, pass them and get out there, let them fight it out amongst themselves, and he's doing just that, going away in fact. Ron Cotta weaving his way through the lappers as we check the Honda stopwatch. We'll get a good lap time on Stefan. Well, he's been looking for a race like this. He says, you know, to save face, he says, I've got to get some wins here. In the last two opportunities, I've got to show him what I can do. He's he, showing us now. He, of course, ran in the 250s just for some experience. He's been really on his team, Honda of Troy, to try to get him more experience on the 250s. He said he loves it. His 250 action hasn't hurt him much here today. Uh, I think it helps. Looks like it does for Dowd. Dowd. Dowd in second place, getting caught up in the lappers right now. He's lucky right there, not the high side off the back of Brandis. 
got in there a little bit more speed into that corner. He has not let Villeman close the gap. Even through the lappers, he's been able to maintain this little gap he's had. That's going to give him some confidence. Maybe he'll quit worrying about him and start riding his own race. The lappers work out in his favor. He may even have a try to challenge uh, Ron Cotto before it's over with. Villeman getting around with Pingree and Brandis is his next target in order to pull up on John Dowd. Let's check in with Davey Combs. Hey, watching the way this, break, this race is breaking down, keep this in mind. This is not bad for Bielman because if he stays in third, Dowd gets second, they're gonna be a, there's going to be a three-point gap going in that last race. That means Bielman controls his own destiny. All he's got to do is win the last race. He can still win the title. So this is not like fatal to the title hope. That's absolutely correct, because if he wins that last race, that's four wins. And Dowdy with two wins on the season. If the tie, it goes to the number of wins. Right. David's exactly right. The element, I mean, let's just say he's driving a little off tonight. Uh, it wouldn't be a disaster, but for Dow, it would really help. If he could get up there and tap this guy, Ron Cotta, put another three points on him, that'll help him. Less pressure in that last race. White flag is out. Five seconds. John Dowd over Villeman. Roncata way out in front. It would take a major mistake by Roncata. The checkered flag for Roncata. Oh, what a great win. John Dowd in second place. And Villeman in third so Dowdy now takes a three-point lead going into the final race of the year Ron Cotta, Dowd, Villeman, Ramsey and McCormick it looks like that's our top five we'll be right back and I know Stefan Roncata will be very excited with his first win of the season we'll check in with Davey Coombs when we return This mountain in North America is 20,320 feet. Cool. The more the world changes, the more you have to learn just to keep up. That's why I'm studying electronics engineering technology. ITT Tech has the classes I need for the associate's degree I want. And my class schedule makes it easier for me to keep working while I go to school. The world isn't standing still. Neither should you. Convenient class schedules, focused courses. Take control. With a degree from ITT Tech, call 1-800-942-0099 today. completely restyled the Katana 600 and 750 from their dual halogen headlights to their 4 into 1 stainless steel exhausts. Same time tomorrow? Yeah. So now they're just as impressive on the outside as they've always been on the inside. Now is the time to train for the career you've always wanted. Just ask Motorcycle Mechanics Institute graduate Al Luddington. Now lead mechanic for Honda's championship winning Smoke and Joe's Superbike team. MMI gave me the knowledge and training to take me to the top of my profession. It's a great place to start and I recommend it to anybody looking to kick off a career in motorcycle mechanics or the personal watercraft industry. Change your life with one phone call. 1-800-994-3664. That's 1-800-994-3664. Call today. This was not only Stefan Roncata's first 125 win of the season, but it was also Honda of Troy's first win of the 98 season. You see the crew members just about as happy as Stefan Roncata is. He's smiling right now. Let's go down to Davey Coombs. You're right. He is smiling. He's checking out his new trophy. Stefan, congratulations. That's the best we've seen you ride this year. Yeah, you know, since the beginning, I had some bad luck on some races and just some bad races because I wasn't going sharp or something, I don't know. There are some nice ideas like this, you know, you don't ride good. And uh, I've been looking for that victory for a long time now. I've been training very, really hard. And uh, like I said, I have no pressure on because I'm pretty far in points. So now the only thing I have to do is go out there and have fun and try to win as many races as I can. And tonight I had a lot of fun. I'm very happy with myself. 
Can we expect you to play the spoiler again at Dallas at the last round of the West Region Series? Yeah, you know, like I said, I want to win every race. I'm really motivated now, and I want to beat all, the, all of those guys. You know, and I'm training really hard for it, and uh, I can't wait to shoot out to race and guys against Ricky and uh, and all those guys. I think that that be a, a great race. Well, congratulations to you and the Honda Troy team. And now let's turn over here, and we have the points leader. This is John Dowd. John David Bailey said during the race that all John has to do is hold this guy Bielman back a little bit, and he'll maybe give up. And I think that might have been what happened. Yeah, I, I don't know what happened at the end. I know I've I seen him a few times early on, and uh, I didn't really see him later on. I don't know if he, uh, you know, if he made mistakes or whatever, but that's pretty much what I, I knew I had to do. So um, I was fighting pretty hard to keep him back there. I, you know, I was, I was hoping to win the race, but uh, Stefan was riding really well tonight, and I think I was a little bit nervous. I got a little bit arm pump, you know, about halfway through the race, and uh, you know, I guess I was just maybe thinking about David too much or something. Now listen, you have one race to go. You've beaten Bielman two times in a row. Can you beat him one more time for that title? Well, I guess I'm gonna have to. I mean, that's this last race is gonna be, uh, that's just gonna be it. You know, whoever whoever wins the race, I guess, is gonna end up with the championship. So uh, that's pretty much what I'm gonna have to do is just come out on top, hopefully. As we look at the uh, Suzuki point standings now, John Dowd, 134 points. De Villeman's 131. At least he has that edge of three points, meaning Villeman has to win to get a three-point edge. Yeah, I'd say the pressure's on Villeman, and, and the fact that he has beat him the last two races, that's going to help Dad a little bit in his confidence and his mental preparation. Now I'm down here with David Bielman. Now, David, third place, but it's not out of the, it's not a completely bad thing. You still have a chance for the title. Yeah, I did a, a, a good start, but, uh, you know, John pushed me on uh, outside on the uh, first corner. So I was maybe three, four, six, and uh, I come back very fast on the on Stefan and uh, John. But uh, that was very difficult to pass, and I didn't pass him. And uh, the championship is still uh, all right for me because only three points behind John, and uh, I can win the title in Dallas. But uh, I must take a, a better start. Are you going to go back to France before the last race, or are you going to stay here? No, I will go back in France because I have a world championship in Brazil in two weeks. So I must go back and uh, maybe train a little bit in Europe in Supercross and come back uh, maybe stronger here. We'll look forward to seeing you in Dallas. And uh, back up to you, Art. Okay, the 250s are coming up next. Can Jeremy McGrath make it five for five in Minneapolis? We'll find out in just a moment. Come on. Get away. It's time for a little Lansdowne. Lansdowne Resort, less than an hour from DC. Come on, get away. It's time for a little Lansdowne. Come to Lansdowne for just $99 per person with their whatever the weather package. When you think of delicate northern Italian cuisine served in a relaxed, candlelit atmosphere, think of Zeffirelli's. Tempting delicacies from the land of romance, fresh pastas, seafood, and the best veal chop you'll find anywhere. Zeffirelli's in the heart of historic Herndon, Virginia, convenient to rest in Town Center, Worldgate, and Dallas Airport. It's just the place for a romantic dinner for two or a private gathering. When you think of the romance of northern Italy, it's Zeffirelli's. And discovered electricity in the sky, but he didn't know that it could be found on ice. He never watched hockey, and now he's dead. Watch the NHL on ESPN2 before life passes you by. Catch the new season of Major League Soccer when the New York, New Jersey Metro Stars take on the Kansas City Wizards tonight at 8.30 on ESPN2. Suzuki team manager Roger DeCoster takes a look at the differences of yesteryear and the present day on this week's Suzuki Profile. Uh, I think one of the big differences was that uh, in, in that time, if, if you broke your bike, you were considered a bad rider. You know, you, you, you were considered a rider that, it, uh, that was not thinking. And that was pretty much the same through all the motorsports, like you know, motor, motorcycles, uh, motocross, road racing and also in car racing and then as the technology got better and all that and uh, uh, each time that something is breaking now 
uh, it seems to be that the, the factories find solutions to keep it from breaking and very seldom will a bike still, still really break. You know, you may get a flat tire or something like that, but it doesn't happen too often that the bike really breaks uh, when it's been maintained properly. And th that's a big difference. So, uh, you know, you can jump harder, you can jump harder, you can uh, land harder. Uh, you, you can make mistakes with the bike, you can over rev it, uh, and, and it won't break. So in, in, a way it can, in, in a way it puts more stress on your body because you can push it further, but it's something also that you don't have to worry about. I remember in 72 my bike was, was great compared to the competition, but I could have broken that bike any lap if I wanted to, if I decided to over jump something or, you know, it. I know I could explode the hubs or, or the spokes or, or something, or, or bend the frame uh, or bend the forks. So you have to think about that all the time. Now, now the riders can all, don't only have to think about how fast they themselves can go, what they can handle, what impacts they can handle. That, that's a big difference. Before almost 60,000 fans here in Minneapolis, Minnesota at the Metrodome, Art Ekman along with uh, Dave Bailey welcoming you back. You know, qualifying was a little unusual. Mike LaRocco got his first hole shot since 1991, but it was in the last chance qualifier. Jeremy McGrath had to go to the semifinals to make the transfer to the main event. That's the first time he's had to go to the semis to make the main all year, David. Right, and uh, when Davey was interviewing him, it didn't look like a fake smile. I think he's having a good time. I don't think that's going to matter for him, but it's got to help guys like Lusk, who got the hole shot and controlled his heat race, and Kevin Windham, who looked good in his. He didn't win the heat race, but he, sh he proved that on this so-called one-line track, he can come through the pack. So those guys are looking good. It's going to be a little tougher for Jeremy to hear tonight. Let's check in with Davey Coombs down on the field. I'll tell you something you guys might want to look for late in the race, because so many top guys are injured, like Emig and Albertine, and just not here. A few guys made the main event who wouldn't necessarily make it. It's a very short lap here. So I think at the end of the race, we're going to see a lot of lap traffic. So if there's a battle for the lead, watch the lap riders. They might end up deciding the whole thing here tonight in Minneapolis. McGrath, a living legend, hasn't forgotten the days that he was a banker at the grocery store. Yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of what makes me value what I have now. I mean, back when I was in high school, I would get out of school early, go to work at, at Vaughn's and bag some groceries, and then I'd try and go riding as much as I could. And, and uh, finally had to stop doing that and work at a Honda shop so I could get off and uh, go riding. So I think that's really kept me grounded over the years. I try not to, uh, you know, th think about this motorcycle status that I'm supposed to be in. You know, I'm just me, and I think that's important. And, I mean, having to work at some time in your life at something that you don't like doing really makes you love what you're doing, and I'm having a lot of fun. As we check out the Suzuki Point standings after 10 rounds, McGrath with exactly the same advantage he had going in last week, 56 points, but a different rider in second. We've got Kevin Windham. Lusk, 11 back of Kevin Ward, expected to take a bigger lead on Emig. Emig and Albertine, of course, we've mentioned prior, not racing tonight. They're out with injuries. And uh, this is going to be an interesting factor because this track has taken some tolls. I didn't think it would tonight, Dan. Yeah, and I think this first corner is going to get real interesting. 30-second board is up as we're just about ready to start round number 11. McGrath is perfect here. Four for four in Minneapolis. He'll become the first Supercross rider ever to win consecutive years, five years in a row. And here's the dilemma. If you get the whole shot, do you get on the brakes and tuck it tight like we saw Lusk, Lusk do in his heat race? Or do you do what McGrath did in his semi? You go all the way in there and use the berm on the outside and take your chance that someone's not going to come underneath you and steal it. It is sideways. The crowd so knowledgeable here in Minneapolis. Getting ready for the start of the 250s. Oh, what an equal charge. Lusk has got an inside move. Wyndham's inside. Wyndham, it looked like, was in almost a tie with Pichon for the whole shot money. Right now, the important thing is that Wyndham is out in front of Pichon. Beautiful. For the second weekend in a row, Wyndham 
Marshall's his way into the lead. He had to take a little chance, go around the outside of Bichon that right-hander, but it worked. McGrath's right there, too. Actually, it was Wyndham that bumped McGrath going to that first corner. Good job to stay up by Jeremy. As we go to the triple, it's Wyndham, Bichon, McGrath, Butler, Wusk, Hughes, and a couple of Hondas behind them. Lusk is close enough. You see him pop up right there. You can see the raid. He's got Clark to deal with first. That's not going to be easy. Jeremy McGrath in third. Now he's going to make a quick move, don't you think, on Pichon? Here's the whoop section. Number two to the inside on Pichon, but Pichon powers out of that corner. Pichon almost blew it there. Jeremy McGrath. The fans come alive. Now he's available to attack Kevin Windham. That was just sheer speed and aggression right there that allowed Jerry to, Jerry to make that pass. He forced the shown to come out of that right-hander before the triple, get on the gas early. But he got away from him a little bit. Helped set up that pass by Jerry. Windham, an amazing win last week. Incredible as he got out in front, his relatives and fans and friends there in the Cajun country cheering for him. But right now, the favorite of the fans is behind him two seconds. Right, he hit one big loop right there and getting a lot of air time. Keeping the pressure on Fichon and you see Fichon not letting McGrath go. It's an interesting deal here we got. Last week, McGrath said he was kind of fighting a head cold and he wasn't able to really go out there and challenge uh, Kevin Windham. Well, now he's in second. He's got a good look at Windham up there. Let's see if this makes a difference when he's healthy in his favorite stadium. It'll be interesting to see how Windham reacts because, you know, looking back on last week's race, one of the most significant factors was that Jeremy McGrath could not catch Windham and had to settle for second place. Yeah, that was uh, for sure one of the one of the biggest wins in my mind, just as big as the race itself, uh, to see Jeremy behind me and, uh, you know, halfway through, kind of put a second here and there, and uh, that was, was a great feeling because, uh, you know, when I, when I first saw him back there, I was a little nervous because, you know, I mean, of what he's, what he's done this year and uh, how he's been riding, and, uh, and I just put my head down and keep going, and, and then whenever I started watching and, and saw him kind of falling back just a little bit, big smile was, was on my face for sure. Jeremy McGrath in second. Lusk starting to move along with Pichon on Jimmy Button, number 11. Pichon makes the move. Team Suzuki against the Chaparral Yamaha of Jimmy Button. Look at it for Lusk, Team Yamaha. He's not that far behind, David. This is a great battle. These guys are going fast. And they're losing time to the leaders. Button in the same corner again. Almost puts Pichon up over the hay bales. Did a great job, Pichon, to stay at Back on the racetrack, and Lux is just going, I don't know if I want to get too close to these guys <laughs> yet. I may get caught up in it. Michelle with a good start last week, but faded. As well as making sure going through those loops. Well, they dance high. Yeah, they do if they hit one wrong. Button did that a couple laps ago. This time he's able to go for the triple and hold on to that position. I think uh, Lusk has really been in a position where uh, the last few weeks and having some bad luck this year by getting caught up in, in traffic going down. Lusk to the inside, makes the pass on Pichon. Now he's got Jimmy Button in front of him. Still a three-second lead out front for Wyndham over Jeremy McGrath as they go over the finish line jump. Here's Pichon approaching that same area. I think you're seeing some patience from Rusk right now, just trying to pick his way through at the right time, not get caught up, go down. But uh, the problem with the patience tonight is that Wyndham and McGrath are just they're gone. They're in a class by themselves. McGrath has been unable to close that gap. So for the second week in a row, Wyndham out to the whole shot, and he won't let McGrath get any closer. Ryan Hughes is also looking for some redeeming factors right now after a very difficult season. Side by side, Lusk. And Lusk moving up a position. Ezra Lusk in third. Now, this is it's not impossible. Oh, Pichon, too, taking on Jimmy Buck. Yeah, he got him back in the same corner and then looked over like, hey, that's twice. He did it to me. There's one for you. Now, leave me alone. I got to go racing. <laughs> he doesn't want to get caught up in that. You end up slowing each other down. They can't afford to because Hughes is coming. Miguel Pichon looking for a strong finish on the season. Had one of his best weekends of the season at Daytona. Where he was in second in the heat and a good recovery after a bad start in the main event for a sixth position. As Davey pointed out, the lappers are going to play a major role. 
Already Wyndham starting to get into the back markers. He's hitting them first. It's allowing McGrath to get a little closer. These guys will hit him next. It'll definitely change the way this race takes place. Hughes will be able to capitalize on a bad decision by Button to get through him. Hughes looking at the fifth position that Button has at this moment. Button, his bubble has definitely burst over the last three weeks. There you see that left side of the whoops still getting a groove in there. That's been favored. McGrath is even able to go to the right and still maintain as much speed. Can Jeremy catch up with Wyndham to make it five for five here? Two-wheeled enthusiast gathers at the Honda factory in Marysville, Ohio. Today, we are proud to introduce to you the Honda Shadow Aero. The bike's a real hit with the crowd. The Aero sports the latest in streamlined design with an exhaust pipe right out of the pages of science fiction. Here's Miss Aero showing off the bike's dazzling colors. The Honda Aero is available today, and what's the verdict in Marysville? There you have it, and it's full speed ahead for the bike of tomorrow. Hi, Bob Vila here with an exciting new hand tool from Sears, the Craftsman Pocket Socket Adjustable Box End Wrench. With a one-hand adjustment, you can lock onto nuts and bolts of almost any size, from 5 sixteenths to 3 quarters of an inch, or 8 to 18 millimeters. The closed box end clamps tight. Heat treated steel construction makes it durable. And because it's a Craftsman hand tool, made in America, it's guaranteed forever. To order your Craftsman Pocket Socket, call 1-800-762-9999 now. Yeah, Ted, let me put you on speaker. Hey, Netboy, tell my agent what you told me. Well, if you access my Zone Games customized box score that compiles the player's net worth, uh -huh. you'll see that Mr. Salmon's RBI is putting well ahead of Sammy Sosa in fantasy baseball ranking, yet Sosa earns five mil more. What? Can you believe that? Uh, don't worry, Tim, I'll give a vase on the blower. Of course, Ted, it's just a fantasy baseball... Shut up, Netboy. Uh, look, I'm your agent, Tim. Let me take care of this. Shut up, Netboy. Lampson had their problems. Lampson's pinned under Emig's bike. Emig to the rescue. The exhaust pipe, I think, was laying in the middle of Lampson's back. I'm thinking he probably uh, probably got burned pretty well. You can see a little steam coming off his jersey. That had to hurt. Privateer Yamaha once again against the factory Yamaha. Factory Yamaha this time is Michael Craig making the move on Jeff Matasevich. He's putting the heat now on number 19, Michael Craig. Let's see what the strategy... Oh! on that step up whoop that gives some room for Jeremy and gives him the edge gives him the better line and Jeremy McGrath is now our new leader 14 laps Michael Craig led in this race and Jeremy McGrath takes it away but he's on pretty much on cruise control as well as Mike Kudrowski back looks like he'll nail down a third unless a mistake is made the knack knack on the triple as he goes now for the checkered flag and the finish line jump nice style 48,500 fans very impressed with their first opportunity to watch Jeremy do business in their, uh, what do they call it? The Hubert H. Humphrey Metro Dome. Time's running down. Wyndham with 13 laps to go. Not quite to the halfway point now. Good ride by Pichon so far. It wasn't that long ago. Pichon and Wyndham were dicing it here in 125 in the East-West shootout. Wyndham got the, got the nod in that battle. Pichon, his best finish of the year was the Open in Los Angeles. Of course, also won his heat there. The two-time 125 Eastern champion has had some good times here as well. This battle right here, Pichon, Button, Hughes. Still staying close to each other, but they're losing time on Lust. It's Wyndham. McGrath. Lust in the top three positions. Then that battle with Pichon, Button, and Rhino. Rhino, number 10. Team Kawasaki. Great big finish line jump. Ryan reaching up to clear his vision. Now when they get into lappers, they want to use that left side for the whoops, that faster line. Sometimes they can't. So the ability to react to a different line and make that adjustment, still get through there quick, not lose time, tough. Ryan Hughes trying to catch up with Jimmy Button. He went down three times last week. You know, most guys would have given up by now. But Rhino just keeps coming back for more. And look at this, leaping by Jimmy Button. 
Kyle Button wasn't able to go for the triple that time. Set that all up. Button's got hot and cold spots. When he's hot, man, he is moving. As soon as, as soon as he can put that together, stay a little bit more consistent, he'll be a real threat. He's had three podiums this year. He's led 14 laps. Ryan Hughes, Jimmy Button, and here comes number 13, Michael Craig. Now that Pichon has broken free of this battle, he's gone up and started challenging Luck. We've left these guys to battle amongst themselves. McGrath has cut the lead of Wyndham down to two seconds. So he's cut a second off the lead since the last one. Look at this. He's making evening a closer move in the whoop section. Well, now we're really going to see what Wyndham is made of. Last week, he made McGrath say uncle. Not many guys do that. But McGrath was saying he didn't feel 100%. He's just trying to get more points. Didn't have to win it. I don't think anything was going to stop Wyndham in that Superdome last week. This is the Metrodome. This is this is where Jeremy rules, and we're going to see a great fight. Ali Seymour, good racer in his own right, the mechanic of Kevin Wyndham again. Kevin Wyndham, hang on, condition-wise, not make mistakes. That's the big key on this track. Conditioning, I think, I don't think this track takes as much out of you as it did last week, and he was able to, to hang on there for 20 laps. Oh, look out! Jeremy climbing up his back right now. Two Yamahas out in front. Yamaha has yet to finish off the podium. Well, let me put you in Wyndham's shoes for a minute, okay? He's been leading this thing so far. It's his to lose. The pressure is mounting. He's got the winningest Supercross right, motocross of all time chasing him down. And every time Jeremy does anything a little different, this crowd just leaps and screams, and Wyndham can hear all that. Back quickly now as uh, Jimmy Button is challenging Jimmy Button. Or the other way around. Button starting to challenge Hughes. We'll get it straight. It's a battle for fourth place right now. Wyndham, McGrath, Lusk, Michonne, Rhino is in fifth. Back to the leaders now. Every time they get to that whoop section as they start in, McGrath goes in on the right. Makes up a bunch of time, but then he loses it at the last half. All he's doing right there, trying to get a little more pressure put on Kevin, and the crowd gets into it and puts even more. Less than eight laps to go. This would be remarkable if Wyndham can hold him off. Well, what's going to happen is lap riders are really going to play a part. they got four of them coming up they're going to have to deal with. Jeremy is so crafty and so smart. He's got so much experience running up front in these situations where Kevin really hasn't. So that, that could make the difference here tonight. Kevin Wyndham, Jeremy McGrath. There you see the lapper in between. McGrath cuts to the inside, and the crowd goes crazy. Will Wyndham strike back immediately? Well, he was only able to go for the double that time. Jeremy tripled it. He stayed surprisingly close to him, though. Well, you called that shot as a local favorite, Pavoni, was in between the two. McGrath, Wyndham is down. Wyndham is down on the near side. This is on that whoop section just leading up to the triple jump. Lusk hasn't come around yet. He's going to get going just in time, I think. He won't be able to do this triple, though, and Lusk will. No, Lusk didn't take the chance. Uh, Maybe was, he wasn't sure where Wyndham was going. Right, he, he didn't want to land on him. Lusk but, making sure. The concentration of Wyndham just got completely interrupted. Remember all the way back to the first round where Henry led it all, all the way to the last lap? And he had Cortelli pass him, and moments later, crash. Really takes it out of you when you've got that kind of pressure, and then you finally get past. Well, the challenge now is on for Wyndham to hold Lusk behind him, which is no small task. Wyndham with three third place finishes, and the win last week. I can tell you, if he wasn't tired, he is now. It takes a lot out of you to go down, get back up. As soon as you do, you've got more pressure, especially from somebody like Lusk. That's not going to be easy for him to you know, hold him off. Ezra Lusk, five podiums this year for Ezra. McGrath making that pass only a couple of laps ago now has a gigantic lead. So Jeremy McGrath is on his way to rewriting the history books once again, Davy Combs. Looks like you guys are safe now, but we start to get nervous about Wyndham. Yeah, I mean, I knew Jeremy would be really strong. Wyndham rode really good last week. Um, I mean, I knew Kevin was going to be tough here also. 
and I just tried to keep telling Jeremy that he was stronger, and uh, he was catching him a little bit, and uh, I thought Kevin would ride a little bit better once we got by, but it looks like he made a mistake. Now, Henry moving up a notch, getting around Button. Henry in fifth now, Button moves back to sixth. Next guy in line for Henry to get around would be Pichon. He's got a ways to go to get there, but the way Pichon faded last week, that's not impossible. Pichon, actually, you'll see him at the bottom of your screen. He's just sneaking into that battle for second between Wyndham and Luck. I don't think he'll fade again. That track in New Orleans really took a lot out of guys. I bet you Pichon uh, may have hurt it a little bit from the cost of fading that bad. I'm sure he did his homework this week. With Ward with a sore back, with Albie out, I would imagine Roger DeCoster went to Mikel and said, you know, please do it. Lusk and Wyndham. Back and forth we go. Interesting development right there. The flagman was waving the flag, and there was nothing wrong on that triple jump. Lusk decided not to go for it. He got... It's interesting. Uh, I don't know why he was waving it. Didn't see anything in the way. Those guys lost valuable time, though. Way out in front, Jeremy McGrath. And here's the battle for second place. Kevin Wyndham and Ezra Lust with Pichon in the background. Wyndham's doing a heck of a job right here. Hold Lust back there. Second in points is rookie 250 season. It's amazing. The white flag is coming up. Jeremy McGrath just taking the white flag. Now Wyndham right there knew how important it would be to try to get over that jump. Couldn't quite get over it enough to triple up onto that plateau, but you can see he opened up a good little lead there. Lush rides by the white flag. Can he somehow take Wyndham for a second place finish? His third second place of the season. There's Jeremy McGrath, Randy Lawrence. This mechanic. Now what won it for him tonight was he was a little bit more confident, I think, in his ability to go 20 laps than Wyndham was. And he kept the pressure on. He didn't make any mistakes. Has time to wave to the fans. Five for five in Minneapolis. Jeremy McGrath. The battle for second. Wyndham and Russ going at it now. Tooth and nail. Wyndham still holding on as they come around the final corner. It'll be Wyndham in second and a valiant try for Ezra Lusk. Mike LaRocco goes down along with Larry Ward. They're out of the picture, though, as far as the big points race is concerned. But Jeremy McGrath, number two. No one has ever won at the same venue on three brands. Jeremy McGrath has done that as well as win his five consecutive years right here in Minneapolis. Win number 51 for Jeremy McGrath. This place he knows how to him. bring him alive, doesn't he? Well, it, when you don't do anything in the venue but win, you know you're going to have a, the crowd behind you. And I thought that, that Kevin did a heck of a job, too, to try to fight him off, then crash. He showed a lot of resolve, able to hold off Lusk. So McGrath just keeps shortening the list mathematically of those eligible to compete for the title now as he dominates the season coming in with a 56 point lead on Kevin Windham. Windham picks up three more points there so he's got the 59 point lead before we go on to St. Louis. Davey Combs is going to have fun on that victory podium. Okay, we'll take a short break and be right back on that winner's podium. AMA Supercross is brought to you by Dunlop, simply the best for your bike. If you didn't get one of the cruisers on your left, then you didn't get the accessories on your right. Lucky for you, you have more time to get one of the bikes on your left and the accessories on your right. Bikes, accessories. Suzuki Fest 98 has been extended. It's now Cruise Don't Lose Days till May 31st. Hurry in and get your choice of $500 worth of accessories free and great deals like zero down or low APR financing on selected models. So march right in, left. This simple looking device is the key to unlock your body's hidden potential. Introducing the Bowflex Power Pro. 
Bowflex uses patented power rod resistance to give you an incredibly smooth, natural feel for over 60 different health club quality exercises. It's time to get the body you want with no money down and payments as low as $33 a month. Call right now for your free video and brochure. Discover the body you've always wanted with the Bowflex Power Pro. A magazine's success starts with the writers. Get me the lowdown on Jordan. What's this beef with the Bulls? And give me a piece on the Latin influence on baseball. Pedro Martinez, Omar Vizquel, with a preview on all 30 clubs. Comprende? Print it, baby! AMA Supercross has been brought to you by Honda Motorcycles. Celebrating 50 years with great deals during Honda Dream Days. And by Suzuki Motorcycles and ATVs. Now during Suzuki Fest 98, get $500 worth of accessories for free. And choose from great deals like zero down or low APR financing on selected models. Welcome back to the Metrodome in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Art Ekman, David Bailey, Davey Coombs, Jeremy McGrath. As we see him celebrating with the crowd his fine victory here today. McGrath with four straight victories in a row this year, then picked up a win at Daytona. And after a second place last week, puts the W in the column once again. Our top ten results, McGrath, Wyndham, Lusk, Fashone, Henry. Michael Craig, a good run for sixth. Button, Rhino, Ward, LaRocco rounding out that top ten. Let's go down to Davey. Well, we got the interviews going right now. I've got third place Ezra Lust right here. Now, Yogi, tell us about the end of the race. You and Kevin Windham got together after he went down, but then you had a hard time getting around him. Yeah, I, you know, I, I felt a lot better this weekend than I have the last four weekends, you know, since I hurt my hand. So I'm happy about that. You know, I'm, I'm just not happy that I'm not winning. But uh, you know, all the lappers and everything was just really, really tough to, for me and Kevin to have a good battle. but. That's the way it goes. You know, I know it's always about winning the race, but it is between you and Kevin now for second place. He's got about five points on you, if I'm not mistaken. You know, I could care less. You know, I, I just, I want to get back to where I was, and, uh, and I'm getting there back slowly and slowly. You know, it's not going to come overnight, and, and uh, I'm getting back to the top, so I feel good. But, uh, you know, mainly I want to thank Honda and uh, Fox and Dunlop. And the good Lord Jesus Christ for keeping me safe. You know, I always uh, like to keep go, keep things going like they've been the past few years, and uh, and I just I'm really happy to be back back to the way I am. But you sound disappointed tonight. I am, you know, because I, I, I know I can win. But uh, I'm just getting back to par, you know, like I said, and uh, it's just going to take a little bit of time. All right, thanks, Yogi. Now we're going to turn over here, and we got the second place star. Hey, Kevin, for a while there, it looked like two in a row. Yeah, well, <laughs> I think I may have started thinking about that a little too early. Uh, Jeremy uh, seemed, seemed to be riding great. Of course, he's riding great. He won, but uh, the other night, I think, think he had a little bit extra time what I felt in, uh, in, in New Orleans, you know, kind of have the home crowd. It's not exactly his home crowd, but I think he has something to prove with winning as many times as he has here in the, uh, in the Metrodome. So uh, I felt great, and, uh, you know, our bikes are working great, me and Jeremy's both, and uh, the Yamahas are, are getting us up on the podium. What about the end of the race? You and Ezra Lusk had a great battle for second. I thought you showed a remarkable amount of maturity the way you got up off the ground. You kind of gathered yourself, and uh, then you held him off. How hard was that? Uh, it, it was, uh, that was the toughest part of the race for sure. You know, sometimes when you fall, you don't really get up and uh, do as good, good as you did before you went down. And, uh, man, I just, I feel like I'm in good shape. My trainer's been helping me a lot, Gary Simics, and uh, everything's just been going really good. And that, that was my goal once I went down, just, just to keep Yogi behind me. And uh, it was a great race. and. Uh, uh, I had a lot of fun. All right, congratulations on a great couple weeks. Let's go back up to you, Art. Okay, thank you, Davey. As we take a look at the Suzuki point standings now, Jeremy McGrath with 249 points has a 59-point lead on Kevin Windham. Windham, uh, for everybody's interest, uh, now has a 13-point lead over Ezra Lusk. It's 190 to 177 in those at uh, second and third place position on the points list. Let's go right back to Davey. You know, Jeremy, last week Kevin Windham had a hometown crowd behind him. It seems like here in Minneapolis, this is your hometown crowd, but man, you're from like California. Yeah, you know, we had Anaheim and, and LA and San Diego, but geez, it seems like Minneapolis is louder than all of those put together. And man, it, it's great. It makes me pumped. 
Now, they got to see you ride three times tonight, which is very rare with that semi, but it looked like it didn't bother you at all. You got a pretty good start. You let the race break down and pick it up from there. Yeah, I got a decent start. I was a little worried because I had to race the semi, so I had ninth pick on the line, and I was a little worried about that, but I got a, my chaperone Yamaha put me out right out in front, and I came over on those guys with a little cut off, not too bad, and uh, hit the brakes, and a few guys snuck underneath me, but felt really good. Now, the way I can count up in my head real quick, I'd say you're at least 60, maybe 61 points up front. You already start, you got this thing wrapped up. Well, I, I can never count my chickens before they hatch, you know. I, my chaperone Yamaha was working really good out there. And, uh, you know, without 800 Click, Mazda, Fox, Bell Helmets, Sidel Max, Alpine Stars, you know, there's a whole group of people. Without them, I wouldn't be in the point lead. So everything's just clicking right now. I just want to win each race I go to. All right. Well, congratulations on your fifth win in a row here on three different brands. Man, you own this stadium. Well, Minneapolis has been really good to me. And, uh, you know, my bike was working excellent, like I said. And the fans cheer really loud. So... With a combination of the two, it's it's excellent. Davey Coombs, you're pretty doggone close in your guesswork down there as this young man has a 59-point lead over Kevin Windham as we head to St. Louis. He's 5-for-5 five five here in Minneapolis uh, to equal his 5-for-5 five five in San Diego. And, of course, he had 4-to-4, four 4-for-4 four, four four at Anaheim. He loves Southern California, but I'll bet he'll come here at a moment's notice, David. I'm sure he would. Anytime you win that many times on that many brands something's clicking it's already low to emerge tonight but Montgomery County police who've been very careful to our from the trans world dome in st. Louis it's round 12 of AMA Supercross hello everyone Art Ekman David Bailey Marty Reed to bring you the most exciting Supercross action in the world we'll be getting right to the qualifying action where the top four from each qualifying heat get the first selection of gate positions and a transfer directly to the main event the rest of them move on to the semifinals where the top five from each semi get the transfer. Only one more chance to win the big bucks, and that's the last chance qualifier. The two top finishers rounding out the 20 rider 250 field. Getting set for heat one. The riders at the gate right now. Getting ready for the lineup for heat number one, where you see Kevin Windham, Ezra Les, Mikel Pichon, Jimmy Button, Ryan Hughes. And Kevin Windham was consistent and patiently successful before New Orleans. But after his home track win, he's looser, smiles a lot more, and looks like he's having a lot of fun. Well, uh, I guess before the win, I was definitely, you know, a little intimidated. And, and uh, mm, I don't know, I just wasn't, wasn't riding like myself. I mean, I was riding good, just, you know, you can kind of see when, when a rider starts to really come into his own. And, uh, you know, everybody at the truck's been saying the same thing, you know, I'm just looking real good and uh, you know it's fun to watch because I'm charging the corners now and stuff and uh, I don't really know what it is I, I mean I, I wish I could pinpoint it because you know sometimes you don't have it you don't always have it and uh, you know, it's just one of those things no one knows where you get it but uh, you know once you get it it just kind of snowballs and uh, once you have one good ride and two and it just kind of keeps going he's got his game face on now Marty Reed yeah, but one of the things I'm finding interesting, Art, is this is the doghouse. Normally, you like your position to be right next to that doghouse. Gives you that straight line cut towards that first corner. But as we come on down here, take a look where Wyndham is lined up. He is second from the outside, and it is not the best line. And I'm sort of wondering, and we're going to be able to listen in. Ali Seymour is wearing our microphone. Maybe we'll hear something. Ali Seymour, his mechanic, is uh, Kevin Wyndham. Cranks it up. Your opinion, David Bailey? Well, actually, Marty's right. He is all the way to the outside of the gate, but actually, as you go into the first corner, it's the inside, and it is a little bit of a drastic measure to go that far. However, he watched those 125 heat races and saw that if you're on the outside and don't get a good start, there's nowhere to go. You get pushed completely off the track, so I think he's trying to play it safe here. Lusk, number three, alongside number 100, Honda of Troy's Michael Brown. The 32nd board is up, and we're almost set for our first qualifying heat. Here in St. Louis, Mikel Pichon. He's looking for his first win of the year. He's been fast. He's been looking a lot more competent lately. As Pichon got a fourth place finish last week at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. We take a look at the nervous gestures now as we go down the starting gate line. Great crowd on hand once again here in St. Louis. The third Supercross round ever played here in the gateway to the west. We're all set to go now for 
our first qualifying heat of the evening. They're off. Wyndham with a good angle. Kevin Wyndham, number eight. And Ezra Lusk, number three, one and two. It's Ryan Hughes in the third spot with Michael Brown being challenged for fourth by Jean Sebastian Waugh. But out in front, Kevin Wyndham, when he gets the whole shot, he's tough to beat, David Bailey. He is, and the only guys that have beaten him when he's gotten that whole shot have been Lusk, who's behind him right now, and McGrath. Lusk and Wyndham have gotten together so many times in the heat race this year. Jimmy Button making the big move, battling for fourth. But out in front, it's Kevin Wyndham. He just has all kinds of confidence since that victory in New Orleans. Moving into second place in the points race behind McGrath. Here's Jimmy Button in the battle for fourth. Mike Brown, number 100, right behind him. John Sebastian Wolf, boy, behind him. Well, it's just a stack of talent right there. Somebody's going to go to the semi. Only the top four make it out of each qualifying heat to the main event. The rest going to the semifinal, David. Pichon moving up right there on that straightaway within striking distance to Brown. Mikel Pichon.